back, back with Filecoin Live here downstairs. Thanks everybody for hanging out here. Hope everybody's having a good time. And um, I'm here with Meg and Jonathan from Holen Investments. They came all the way from the great nation of Australia. So thanks for the round of applause, well deserved. Um, and I'd like to turn it over to, to Jonathan here, and I'd, I'd like to tell you a bit, or I'd like to tell, like for you to tell us a bit about just Holen's uh, kind of history with Filecoin. You guys have been involved from kind of the beginning, really, and I'd like to kind of, kind of help give us some context to, to other uh, listeners here just about, um, you know, what your involvement in Filecoin is and how it all began. Perfect. Thanks very much, Aaron. Uh, it's great to be here. So Holon has uh, three parts to the business. Uh, we're a financially regulated business. So uh, the, we have um, the asset management side. So in Oceana, we were the first people to launch uh, a Filecoin wholesale fund for investors. Pretty big deal for the ecosystem. We actually take that file and stake it into our operations, our infrastructure. Um, the second part of the business, we have a VC arm, and we invest in amazing next-gen businesses like um, Avanti Bank, run by Caitlin Long, and we, uh, we've also invested in a CME Futures Bitcoin and Ethereum exchange as well. So that VC arm, we just love to invest in anything that's a uh, digital asset, Web3, that's going to change the world. And then the third part of the business that uh, myself and Meg work in uh, is the innovation side. And we're really, uh, we play with anything in Web3. It's, we're really, uh, it's our playground, we would say. So the first infrastructure that we've launched is Filecoin storage provider infrastructure. So we've got 27 petabytes at uh, Air Trunk Data Center. Uh, in Sydney. It's actually the largest DC in the country. Um, last week we bought our own solar farm as well, so we can make that uh, technology run completely on green energy. And yeah, at the moment we're just scaling our infrastructure and uh, we've got, we're doing quite a few things across the whole ecosystem, which Meg's going to talk about, but um, uh, we also are building other infrastructure for Ethereum and Bitcoin as well. So, yeah, really, it's an amazing project and a great business to work for. Amazing. So thank you for that. And I would love for you to kind of just help frame, um, you know, what is sort of the, the, the addressable market that you see here that, that makes it a worthwhile use of your time to, to really dive into the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, obviously, storage is something that everybody needs and they're probably going to be need more of in the future. Um, but I'd love for you to just kind of talk about like kind of your, your, your investment thesis essentially behind like why is this a market that's worth really investing your time and resources into uh, at this point in time? Great question. So ultimately, we believe everything is going to be tokenized. Like we're in a moment now where that we're in the tokenization of everything. We're going to see NFTs for media, uh, for music artists. Um, we're going to see physical experiences tokenized. We're going to see uh, real estate tokenized. And really, that, that has two parts. First, you have an NFT, which is on a blockchain, which is your verifiable thing, which you own and control. But ultimately, you have... Uh, data connected to that NFT, which shows the past history of what it is, how much yield it creates, swapping it, buying it, all those kind of things. That data needs to sit somewhere on verifiable data storage. So the, the opportunity, lots of investors say to me, like, how big is this verifiable data storage opportunity? And I just go, this is an exponential opportunity. It's very hard to, uh, to size an exponential opportunity when everything physically uh, is an NFT. So, um, like, you just look at YouTube, 800 million videos, each one of those turns into an NFT, real-time payments for, uh, for the use of those videos. So, yeah. It's going to be a really big market as this grows. I don't think it's like a Web 2 versus Web 3 thing. I just think data storage grows exponentially over the next 50 years. Because uh, we're an asset manager, uh, 
uh, we're a regulated entity. We, we think about things in long terms, you know, 10 to 20 years. We're not really, we, we don't really care about the volatility short term. Um, but yeah, the, the market is going to be absolutely massive. And I think the use cases are coming through now, especially in the music industry with music NF, uh, NFTs for artists. Um, and also real estate is actually starting to be uh, fractionalized in uh, Australia. We've got a few startups that fractionalize re real estate across the country. So yeah, going to be massive. So Meg, tell us a bit about what your role at Holin is and what's, what are you focused on on a day-to-day -day basis and, and why is this an exciting space for you to be working in? Commercializing it. So there's been massive focus on building the infrastructure, which we needed to do, right? And we're at a stage now where we can onboard clients, the use cases, the early adopters, the ones that want to... Uh, startups that want to start as they mean to continue in the Web3 world. Music startups are a really good one, NFTs especially. But now we have something that we can offer. And as Jonathan said, it's not a Web2 versus Web3 world. There will still be centralized storage that has the right value proposition for different parts of the business. It's more of a hybrid offering that can do lots of great things for different people depending on their needs or businesses. But we are also working hard on working through what a DAO might look like. And we heard Juan talk about data DAOs upstairs. And as storage providers, how can we really uh, commercialize this distribution, distributed decentralized network amongst enterprise grade businesses. So a few of them here, we've got Hide over here from Decent, we've got DLTX and Picnic. So we're starting to build through something that might be very commercial and it should take Filecoin into its next league in commercialization this year. Excellent, excellent. And then maybe maybe tell us a bit more about you know just as your 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 journey in the in the Filecoin ecosystem has evolved obviously since you know 2017 and you know I mean the crypt, whole crypto industry in itself has evolved massively since then you know to the point where you know at least nowadays it's not like embarrassing to say that you work in crypto <laughs> right but like maybe maybe kind of tell us like what are some of the you know what progress have you seen made in terms of just receptivity among some of these larger, you know, larger incumbent, like, you know, uh, you know, companies or enterprises that have lots of data? And then maybe what are some of the kind of the hesitancies or the hurdles that you're still encountering, you know, in conversations with these folks? What's kind of that? Is there, you know, is there still a main stumbling block that we're, we have to get over here? We'll, we'll do this in two parts. Okay, I'll hand it over to Megan a sec. So, Look, we're a, as I said, we're a uh, regulated entity, and at the moment we've put uh, capital into the ecosystem around about 20 mil. Um, so as we scale this business, we now need to take it to pension funds, right? So we need to institutionalize this whole conversation. Because if we really want to get to this projected mark of a Yotabyte that Juan's put out there, that's, that's a lot of money, right? So uh, at the moment, we're writing an ESG, ESG report so we can then go to pension funds and, and ask for 250 million, right? That's, that kind of number is really a rounding error for pension funds. That's how we take this conversation to the big end of town and we can scale it substantially. Then ultimately, we need to commercialize the conversation and that part, I'm gonna hand over to Meg. I'll go back just one second, because you asked about the journey. Heath Benke, our founder, he heard Juan Benet speak in 2016, and he just watched him for years. And then he was a SAFT investor, and he kept saying to us, there's something in this, guys. I want you to watch it. So we ran experiments. We got an R&D grant in Australia. Jonathan and his engineering team invested in cutting edge lots of learning around how to you know calibrate these blades to, to be the highest performing blades that we could possibly do and now we're in a place where we you know you our theme is commercialization Aaron like we just want to now make it happen and it's ready to make it happen and with all the great things coming up in the roadmap with virtual machine um, 
you know, retrieval market, 2022 is the year. Excellent. Well, we are, we are uh, but wrapping up here. So thank you, Jonathan and Meg, for coming all the way here to hang out with us today. And we're going to turn it back upstairs here. <laughs>